so let's just start welcome to this webinar everyone my name is suvidya and i'm so excited to host this session for you all today uh, first and foremost i want to thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to join this session our goal for today's webinar is to provide you with valuable insights information and topic on the topic we'll be discussing so the today's topic is uh, personalized voice ai led omni channel communication adoption and real world results for enterprise data collection we'll be exploring how the benefits of implementing ai led omni channel communication strategies can work for you share the real world results and discuss best practices for achieving tangible improvements in debt recovery rates so we have a really fantastic speaker with us will be sharing his expertise insights and his experiences with us and we are excited to hear from him mr hemnag vijayan so hemnag is a seasoned executive with extensive leadership experience in building and scaling organizations of over 3000 employees in the bpo and financial services space he has expertise in setting up and scaling center of excellences in various aspects of an organization including outbound digital sales call centers digital innovation in customer engagement and enhancing customer experience hemnag has worked with wipro dell icic bank fundsindia.com calido fin and he is currently working at vindhya e infomedia as senior vp of operations and service delivery he is also working as a strategic advisor for fashion dx Uh, dx is a us based fashion tech company where he is helping them set up call center sales ops and digital franchise pnl a uh, few of his notable achievements are he helped funds india increase their customer base by five times which helped them grow assets from 1000 cr to nearly 6000 cr he has led previously programs to convert 55% of dormant customers to active credit card users he has grow 5500 cr incremental revenue by sourcing fees generating asset products digitally transformed online sorry offline field workforce into online sales experts he was also appointed <coughs> as customer grievance officer for calido fin private limited uh, he has built engagement tools for customers and workforce management using voice solutions so let us all welcome mr himna vijayan thank you thank you subhavya yeah and the other panelist uh, on this webinar would be mr rahul rakesh he is the director of channel partners and alliances at sarthi dot ai so he has over a decade of experience in the ai industry and he holds a strong background in consulting rahul has made a name for himself in various fields such as conversational ai edtech and hr tech and he has helped more than 300 sorry 30 enterprises adopt conversational ai products into their day to day operations he previously founded an edtech startup and served as a founding member of an early stage hr tech startup as well so his technical expertise and knowledge regarding voice led communication strategies and conversational ai products makes him a valuable asset to any discussion about the latest trends and advancements in this industry let's welcome mr rahul rakesh as well thank you thank you so we thank you for all yeah so without further ado let's get started yeah thanks um, thank you suvida i'll i'll take it forward from here uh, good evening everyone and uh, welcome to our webinar uh, on personalized voice ai led omni channel communication adoption in real world right uh, um, so i am rahul rakesh and i'm thrilled to be a part of today's discussion with our guest mr hemnag vijayan uh so today hemnag uh, will be sharing his insights and perspectives on the topic um so i am confident that we are in for an engaging and informative discussion so without further delay uh, let's get started um so hi hemnag uh, thank you for joining us today uh, how's things how are you fantastic so basically uh, i just want to first of all uh, thank the entire team for having me here a special mention to miss suvidya who had meticulously planned this event followed up diligently which clearly demonstrate what kind of resources uh, your organization hires for that matter i have hugely admired the passion for problem solving that yourself mokshed 
Akansha carries with them when I've experienced during my interactions building on AI solution for us. The passion that your team carries fosters so much of confidence on customers like me, and I, that gives me the feeling that you guys mean partnership and you're diligent in nature. I strongly believe an employee is an organization's true brand ambassador. So thank you once again to Team Sarathi. No, uh, pleasure is completely ours, uh, uh, Himnag. Uh, uh, definitely, thank you for the kind words. So, uh, but uh, so we need to more, know more about you. So, but before moving uh, to the set of questions which I have for you today, uh, so we would love to know more about your journey before uh, uh, joining Windya because you have been uh, into industry for a quite long with multiple organizations, right? Um, so before joining Windya and now with Windya. Uh, what kind of change in role, like how, how you are seeing the opportunities now and before, right? Uh, just wanted to understand a bit on, on, on that side, on your side, right? Then probably from there, we can take this forward. Yeah, basically, my journey is a, a mix and match of a lot of uh, industries that predominantly stayed in a uh, financial space. So I started my career uh, with uh, a company called uh, Anthrix, yeah, yeah, and, and Anthrix T Solutions, yeah. It was one of the very pioneered BPO call center, which I started my career with. Then I moved on to become a subject matter expert for Bank of America through Wipro. And I was a team manager with the Dell for a long time. And post which my real, uh, the financial career started with ICICI Bank. And uh, I started uh, as an assistant manager with a team of 50 people. And I was spent nine and a half years with them. And I uh, exited them as a regional head of sales. Uh, and I was managing a thousand member workforce over and above the entire Tamil Nadu and uh, Kerala markets. After which, uh, then the next era of my career started where uh, I joined a fintech startup where I felt that, you know, I can contribute all the knowledge that I bring from ICICI, Dell and uh, Wipro. I thought I can contribute to a, a, a startup environment where I was, I joined fundsindia.com, who's a pioneer of uh, online mutual fund uh, investment platform, uh, the, the, the pioneer, right? Uh, I joined them as their head of uh, customer acquisition. And then, like uh, Suvidya just called out, when I joined the company, it was a thousand crore portfolio company. And with, uh, of course, with team and product and technology and a little bit of my acumen as well, uh, we grew the business six times. And, and then I spent a good four and a half years with them, followed by which uh, I wanted to do something even more further. I'm basically a very uh, insatiable, hungry person, right? I want to keep contributing and I want to have a purpose because anybody can get a career, but I need a purpose in my career. Then I joined a, a new bank called Kelly Dufin, where they were, uh, they had a purpose of, you know, trying to propel people's uh, rural women, the saving solutions, what they were building. So I was, I joined them as a VP customer engagement, where I have to strategize uh, communication to media, dark, deep drilling uh, rural places. Therefore, uh, the challenge was these people won't even have a, a, a smartphone. And uh, imagine a tech company has to reach out the solutions, all of them. So that is when my first, uh, you know, love for AI started, right? Uh, I, 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 that time, I mean, uh, exactly three and a half years back, I was attempting to uh, design a complete bot on the web, like an IVR bot, right? Where it can have multilingual capabilities to, you know, for all these media dark people where they don't need to have a smartphone, but all of the AI can be built where they can just dial like a normal toll free number and the conversations can go and give them proper solutions. And then we initiate a field officer to go and meet them and conclude. So this is something, a big attempt that I did, but I'm telling you two years back, this technology was not as good as it is today, right? That was something which I built. And I think with you guys around the corner, I think I'll be able to offer it as a solution to my ex-employer now. Yeah, yeah definitely. Actually, uh, I, I guess uh, the industry has grown, grown also within these uh, two years, but uh, I want to know a bit more about Vindya because it's an inter uh, interesting uh, uh, company uh, which we have come across, right? Because you guys are one of those largest uh, inclusive uh, uh, setup uh, in the country, in the contact center space, right? And uh, have won uh, so many awards and appreciation for your work, right? So uh, for the larger audience, can you tell us how you are helping them to develop the skills they need to succeed uh, in this particular field, uh, uh, specifically being into this inclusive uh, uh, employment uh, uh, center? Yeah, so while I was uh, working as a customer engagement strategist for Telegraph Finn, uh, I came across this organization called Windia, and uh, when when I when I met them, I saw what a passionate organization, and that had even more purpose. Like I said, my journey of 
contributing of whatever I've learned is to just make sure that it reaches a larger set of audiences, creating employments with technology and all of it. So when I met Vindhya, India is was the largest uh, inclusive BP in India and it still remains the same. We have a workforce of around 3,000 people, of which around close to 45 to 50 percent are people with disabilities. This was a philanthropic organization. If you ask me, no, it is for-profit organization with a philanthropic angle because we wanted to create market that is job market for people who, who otherwise shunned away, right? Who shy away. So you know what? When you go to a Morgan Stanley or an Accenture or a TCS for that matter, they will have a CSR of five percent of the workforce should be there. So wherein if you have 95 people who are so-called normal and five, five, five people like this, it is always an odd situation. So I want, we wanted to create an organization where uh, where most of them are like that. So they don't feel out of place. So I, I see somebody with a locomotive disability and I'm, I'm, I have a hearing impression. I know I live in the same community. So therefore, your performance and your dedication, your out of place uh, mentality comes out. Therefore, in the last 16 years, we have employed close to 1,500 without the churn I'm talking about, with the churn I'm talking about, right? Created employment and we have a large workforce working from home who are severely disabled as well, as much as 80%, but they can still work from home, right? If you actually visit my uh, office, I mean, all of you are welcome. You will see that we have around 200 the visually impaired people who do call center jobs, right? And we have a, a large workforce of locomotive, disabled, autistic, transgenders who all work for us. And we have around 33 clients all financial space and other uh, video con and, and, and entertainment space who supports us for that. As a matter of fact, Morgan Stanley and uh, TCS and Accenture comes to India to do case study on how to run an organization for disabilities. So where I come into place, when I saw all of this, right, I was wanting to see how can I, when I came in, it was a 1,500, 2,000 people, see today we are 3,000. Where can I contribute? How can I go more deeper? So we went to rural now. Now we are creating rural, like, like you met me in Krishnagiri, right? I mean, we are going to rural, creating jobs there, setting up centers. Now we are in Krishnagiri, Hyderabad, Bangalore, uh, uh, Mysore, Nagpur, and, and more to come. I'm setting up in a lot more other deeper rural places because these are the people who are disabled, who stay back in their home and they can't travel because of their disability. So I'm going to them, creating larger organizations and clients. And of course, with the help of technology, I wanna make it so scalable and productive because the entire nation as a bias that these people will not be able to do and i want to break that and i can break that one with determination passion and technology definitely as, as you mentioned right it's an interesting concept altogether right um so the, the very first question which comes to my mind right since we talked about uh, dedication passion technology right being into an inclusive uh, uh setup right so how how are you seeing uh uh this kind of technology where voice-led communication comes into picture. Uh, how, how are you seeing the implementation and how they are going to help setups like you uh, uh, in the coming days? Let me uh, say about AI. I mean, whatever, how I look at it, right? A lot of us think this is something that will impact calls and the jobs to be very open, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. But let me give you a perspective here. AI and tech is here to stay and it's inevitable. None of us, are, even if you're not here on the call today, it is going to happen, right? Having said that, I think the good news is voice AI is an enabler which can make a normal call center agent into a super agent. For simplest relatable example, if I have to tell you, let me refer to Tony Stark from Avengers, right? He's an ordinary man, but with his tech and AI enabled armory suit, he becomes a superhero. This is how I look at AI and how we will all have to look at voice AI as a enhancer of an agent productivity and other related benefits like cost, efficiency, and improved customer service. Just to further validate the perspective, right, uh, Rahul? This was okay, we never stopped going in public transportation or auto. Just because we can, we never stopped going to restaurants. Just because Amazon, we never stopped. Only helping every business, customer engagement centers, to super enable the employees, bring value to both his customer and their staff. That's my yeah. submission so, uh, to this entire forum. Uh, yeah, a very valid point, right? Because uh, uh, like a couple of years back when I was uh, uh, speaking to people in contact center, they were very much scared about uh, AI coming and specifically voice AI coming into the domain because they felt that it's a direct threat to the uh, uh, call center business, right? Uh, but as you uh, said, right, uh, it's a hybrid model which makes your uh, and which enables your human agents to do more lots more activities than what they are doing right now 
um so basically i'll just extend the question um uh, to the, the same part where uh, where you say that uh, it's going to stay and and the things which we have to see in in coming days right but uh, do you want to share your experience with this kind of uh, uh, voice led uh, communication uh, tools uh, which you might have implemented at your end see uh, like i said uh, in the previous tent we did try to attempt uh, a voice remitter right so sticking to the uh, genre of this conversation right uh, predominantly in the debt management business i was also a banker for 9 and 1/2 years yeah. right if you actually bucketized the collection buckets right there are intentional uh, misses out of uh, paying debts and there is non intentional right. non intention is a key pipe because the human beings right we are uh, made our gadgets our uh, life partners now so everything is calendarized and everything is programmed and it needs a constant reminder for people to say hey you know what you need to do this you know that app has to say you have to drink so much of water this app has to say you have to walk so many foot this this app to say please book a cab now even sometime back 10 minutes back i said i have a, a meeting in my phone so we are programmed to such a way that now we have stopped thinking for ourselves therefore right you having a reminder calling coming in is something which is good when you have to pay your dues because i don't see messages right basically so in, when it comes in a voice form and it has an empathetic tone and gives a proper uh, well drafted message oh yes i have to pay so i'm telling you as per statistic 45% of debt management is only reminder missing calls so if you actually notice majority of your recovery happens in your ex bucket if you understand the industry right. terminology ex bucket is somebody who just left their uh, you right and and if that can be tackled with an emi uh, uh, sorry a reminder call right 45% of your problems are over right and then comes the remaining where you would need an hybrid model of having a more conversational uh, bot or then where to humanize the conversation where to bot the conversation these all comes into the picture so while i have used this a lot and i've also recommended to my customer a, a simple ivr right has solved 45% of a problem so with ai i'm only looking at a 65 70% solving of a problem right at, at this bucket so because sometimes ivr now is become a passe because it is monotonous and it has a flat tone but uh, bot and ai has a lot of empathy and it it is asking you questions back it compliments you back it it, it listens to you right so i feel uh, with whatever we are evolving into an ivr and a voice ai uh, era now i have used your product and i have used the previous products and competition products i feel this is something which will work enormously well reminders for paying bills reminders to recharge reminders to you know do what you need to do right especially when you have to pay your bills so uh, this is something that's working and i've i've, I've experienced uh, for my customers on, on behalf of my customers i can tell you this is something which is a workable model so as you as you said right uh, uh, emna right there is an ivr there is a voice ai right uh, but i i just want to understand like is it only the call uh, uh, which is going to solve the problem or or the bucket should be more like but well, basically an omni channel approach where we know that okay this is the person um, who is actually picking up a call but what if if someone is not picking up a call what's the next mode right because even if your agents are calling right uh, there might be people who who know that this is this is a spam number or this is a call center number i don't want to pick right because there are people who are default by choice right for an example right but 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 point is uh, do you do you, are you seeing that the the result or the experience is getting better with an omni channel approach where uh you are trying people through call if someone is not picking up the call you are doing through a whatsapp or doing a sms nudge and and understanding the behavioral pattern of those particular uh, customers right uh, where you are knowing that okay this is a person who is picking at a, the call at a certain specific time or this person is not picking up a call but uh, responding on a whatsapp message right uh, do you think that this kind of model is something which is working well in the industry uh, or what's your take on this kind of omni channel approach uh, uh, towards doing debt collection i think omni channel approach is the only most robust way of doing collections today as you just rightly said you just stole the words out of my mouth so i don't have nothing to say here right i just have to improvise on the spot right now <laughs> <laughs> so like i say when a call doesn't picked up and an sms has been working in the old school right 
now we have evolved to a Facebook, we have evolved to a messenger, we evolved to, you know, wherever you go, I can just track you and say, you know what, you're not paying your bills and you have to get it done. And this omnichannel approach via WhatsApp and SMS and email, and as well as your uh, IVRs and along with your bot and with your agent, there's so many, there's a plethora of uh, services that we can offer today, right? So this is something which has high potency, according to me. Having said that, I also had certain things that I want to share here, right? So to have a very practical nuance, what are the actual challenges in getting this done on an omni-channel is your monotony scripts should be worked on. Your flat robotic tones should be worked on. Engaging content development is something which has to be worked on. Calendarizing the right frequency for effective communication and channel should be worked on. Arriving at simplified call to actions, dashboarding data to arrive at quick course corrections. You know, all of that has to factor in and come in such a way that you should... Uh, Organization should know how to use technology to their benefit, what's working and what's not working. And I think when you, if you're able to crack today, you might not come across very successful as an omni-channel, you know, uh, that, that that's the only way to think work. But if the operational, practical uh, nuances are covered, right, everything is taken care of. I think that's something which we have to bring it to the table as a service provider or a partner to our partners, because most of us are going to think, okay, I onboard, okay, Rahul is chasing me, I'm onboarding Rahul. Now, I, now I'll think Rahul will solve my problem. Yep. Right? Correct. But that's not the case. Hmm. So there is a lot of things that you and me together have to work in laying down the basic, uh, you know, deliverables. What is my DNA and what is that you want to solve for me? And then, giving you access to my, you know, uh, data that you can solve for. So I, I, I guess that's the way actually, right? Uh, because uh, if you see, because being con into contact centers, you are doing a lot more uh, uh, calls, right? Every day, having those engagements happening on call where you are coming across with multiple reasons, right? Uh, someone is paying, someone is not paying, there might be a reason of not paying, right? And there might be different reasons you are coming across or the kind of conversations you are happening every day might be different with certain people, right? So that kind of understanding has to come from a, a contact centers like you, where we can develop something similar on that particular alignment for you, which you can plug in and, and help your uh, clientele or the end customer to to actually utilize at, a, at, at its core at its best right um so my next question to you on on this particular segment itself like people uh or or like a big brands right who who generally uh are using contact center to reach out their customer base right when you ask them that okay i am implementing a voice bot there's a very uh uh obvious question which which comes to, to people mind that is this going to affect my brand right? Or is this going to affect the customer experience, right? I don't want to ruin my customer experience. So how are you dealing uh, uh, with such kind of uh, questions from the client end? And also, what have you seen from the client experience perspective, uh, or the engagement perspective to, uh, to summarize this uh, uh, from the voice uh, led communication or the AI based communication uh, on, on omni channel platform, which you do? So uh, see the the main benefit of an AI, right? It's ability to automate your repetitive tasks, reducing the workload on your on-field humans uh, and your human staff, right? And freeing up their time to concentrate on high value, complex customer interactions, creating superior customer experience. So voice assistants can automate some of your main workflows, like helping customers with frequently asked questions, assisting them with completing common tasks, where the response rates are faster because it has ready-made embedded answers. So, so, I mean, these days, customers, patients are thin. They, they, I mean, we used to go to banks to withdraw money. Now we go to ATM, just withdraw money, right? That's what the customer's speed is, with, right? So therefore, I think the use case is how we can strongly place how the rudimentary task of using a human being, if, if Hemnag has to sit and answer queries, uh, which it is commonly, hey, what's my account balance? can have better conversations with Rahul and say, you know what, uh, I think you're going to fall into an X bucket. And I think before that, your Sybil might get hit. And I want you to let you know that you can avoid it by, can I give you other payment uh, uh, strategy? I mean, can, if you're not able to go to the bank, can I give you uh, a GPay link that you can pay? These conversations will nudge you. I'm bringing you back to pay your bills, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than giving you. So AI, voice AI and this uh, entire uh, bot system, right, is going to take away a large part of rudimentary repetitive tasks, which is a very high productive damaging uh, situation today in most of the 
banks in MFIs today, right? Okay. So that's how I would. Uh, that's how I look at it. I mean, that's how I pitch to my customers. So, but uh, uh, like with with every pros, there might be a cons, right? So, uh, what kind of challenge you see uh, uh, with these kind of uh, omni-channel uh, platforms, right? Uh, uh, plugging in into your system. Uh, and doing the activity, like, do you see there are certain kind of challenges uh, which you can face or you may face during the journey? Um, and and the other question, basically, the sub part of this question will be: if there is a challenge, how do you see that? How we can uh, uh, basically overcome those challenges, right? So I will start off by saying, you know, the most important and critical thing to factor is the nuance that can strike the right balance between when to board a conversation. And at what stage to humanize the conversation, right? We should be cognizant of the fact that you know AI is not an absolute problem solver, but an enhancing solution. But at the same time, it's a cost-friendly model which can scale at infinity. I can make I can reach out to lakhs of customer at the same time without deploying anybody on the field, without you investing on training. All I need to train is my bot, and it's a one-time investment for me. Or it's just a recurring investment, not as much as I have to put in, right? So the the reachability at scale. Today, if I can run seated uh, at a seating place, I can just click up a button. I can send out reminded, reminders or uh, 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 collections call script to lakhs of people at the same time, right? That is the pro. And what is the con? You not covering the basic nuance, just like I said, right? If you don't address empathy, if this is the successful of a good AI bot is empathy, trying to bring empathy there, yeah. right? If I can actually compliment and tell you what is that that I'm trying, to, you're saying something. I don't have money today, yeah. right? As a human, I, will, I would say something. Okay, fine. What can I do? I will capture those notes. But will your bot do that? That's the nuance somebody has to crack, and which you guys have cracked, right? You have to bring in empathy. That is a challenge which everybody will question today, right? Unless of course you experience. Un until Mokshit walked into my office and played an audio for me and shared that, say, say I, I heard a particular call where the customer says, I don't have money now. And it says, okay, the bot says, okay, it's fine. So when can I call you? Is there a, I'm sorry that I called you at this time. See, that empathy is something which is the biggest con question that you're going to post from all your customers, yeah. which I think predominantly you guys have cracked. Now, the next thing is uh, multilingual. How much can you have? See, in, 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 if you come to uh, Tamil Nadu, right, there are four different kinds of Tamil, minimum. You go to Karthika. Uh, you go to Telugu and Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. So how much can you make Telugu? How much can you do? So these are the qu quick questions a demanding customer immediately start asking you. Earlier, I didn't even have that. My IVRs are English. Then vernacular came into place in the last three years. Now there's some aspiring companies like you are cracking that. Now next question, next posing of cons will be, how much can I go deeper? How much can I more localize the language? Right? Now that will be your next, you know, biggest con that you might have to face. Right. And most importantly, right, uh, defining the success metrics with your partners when you're signing an SLA and KPI, now that will be the con. See, it is an evolving solution. I'm to, even today as we speak, somebody is begin. I mean, Sarathi.ai is begin the journey. And I'm sure that you're going to take it to a next level with, uh, of course, partnership and collaboration. But to place the trust, these con questions are something you'll have to really, you know, start taking in and start thinking of productizing the same thing. No, I, I guess a very, very valid point, Himnak, but uh, uh, just coming to this uh, again, right? So when you say uh, that uh, there is a need, right? When you go to a customer, they come up with different things. So you have, like, when we see the journey, Hindi kar lega kya. So that was the question used to come. When you started saying, no, we have vernacular also, we can do in four language or a six language or a 10 language, right? Then people start asking, Acha, can they do multiple dialects also in those languages? So as soon as the time is passing, people are getting used to this. They are coming with multiple kind of question answer because even they are getting... Uh, uh, they, they are getting that hold of, of the entire technology stack, right? So just coming to this again, right? BPOs like you, right? The contact centers who are doing collections, debt collections at, at core, right? With lots of financial units, right? Uh, where you might be doing initial pre-due calls, which is reminder calls, right? Or or uh, uh, then you have due date calls, then you have uh, post-due calls, like X bucket calls, right? Uh, there are certain aspects where uh, uh, people charge on per seat basis, right? And uh, when they when they listen that okay this is a voice AI we need to implement it uh, and uh, 
uh but they when they compare it they say ki i will might lose my seats if i bring this particular conversation and 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 because the money contact centers generally earn is through the seat numbers right um so how do you see right how how it's going to be a a full stack solution with a contact center uh taking that ownership of bringing voice ai uh, omni channel communication for a debt collection process uh clubbing it just like you did right uh how you can tell others to do it like what should be the mantra to actually go into the market ask the customer that okay i have this many seats but bring this particular technology as well this will help us to scale right uh, uh take away from here and and say that okay this is what we have to do also so that we will not lose money on the seats it's an easy one for me i'll tell you that okay so <laughs> yeah, definitely is yes. <laughs> so see every bank today if you actually go back looking at debt service every financial organization in bfc is right has to fill right every year there is no one bank that you can think of wouldn't have written off 50 60 crores bare minimum the smallest of organizations right so my pitch or my focus to my my customer is a 360 degree one you know what you concentrate and focus on your credit scoring and all of that and leave the debts to me from x bucket to your npa i will take over and i will start delivery and where i'm going to be putting my focus a lot of my x bucket and x1 probably will be through my ai where i will charge them differently and the rest of the portfolio book that i have right i will charge them differently and all in all if i had to have you know uh, a, a 360 degree way of delivering to the partner what he is done against what he is currently doing i think it's a win win for them and i think it's all how we position and experience with a used case and a poc to them and say you know what this is doable and i will take over the npa right i i still add money so the npa is something they it's a, it's a known return off of 50 60 crores what if i'm able to recover 10% out of it and i charge them an xy z number that's going to be still a win win for them right yeah so my efforts of using 100 people for a particular bank will be now still used effectively because npa conversations are longer conversations exactly. the remainder yeah. conversations are shorter conversations you can automate it yeah it's more persuasive you need that human touch to to come into picture it can't happen on on a bot, bot perspective right bit multiple channel also like if you also have an omni channel uh, it's pretty difficult because uh, what my understanding in the market is as soon as you start calling for npa customers uh with a certain amount of time which goes into this uh, your connect rate also start dropping people start not responding to those calls right they stop uh, taking up those calls right uh, but i guess with humans uh, uh, that is something uh, you definitely uh, said it uh, that uh, this is doable and 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 we need to look around in in that fashion right uh, so that the agent can be used for more effective conversation um uh, but just to like you you somewhere mentioned right now also uh, uh, when we were discussing regarding the approach right you you mentioned about the kpis right which we need to track as a partner uh, but but as a as a center uh, how you uh, are going to measure the effectiveness of your uh, voice uh, uh, led uh, uh, commun- uh, omni channel communication strategies uh, in debt collection like right? what will be your kpi where you say that okay this is what i wanted to achieve and i have achieved right so um, like and and how you are going to track it right so this is this is what i just wanted to understand uh, from your perspective uh, being sitting there in the uh, uh, in in the, that kind of environment right now so these are basics right so certain kpis that i would measure this entire efficiency of uh, both the human or bot is going to be the same one the connect two at what scale at what cost i will be connecting xyz customers so if i am able to connect through 1000 customers and if i am able to connect to 10000 customers with technology these are the connect is what's the first and foremost and its conversion something else see and i will look at first time conversions and what is the average conversions it takes for a bot versus you know a human does and these are some of the kpis i'll quickly track and uh, most importantly the number of times an average collection can happen from a customer and how many attempts i need to make is something which is a key kpi that i'll be tracking 
right? And basis which, and I think uh, it's not a one-time solve. It, 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 then you have to train your bot on what's happening, at, at what region, at what language, at what city, and what uh, background of a customer, a salaried or a non-salaried customer, What which customer is behaving and responding is something we need to you know, accumulate the data and build more stronger models, more intuitive models, and data and, and that's how you should course correct and you know keep moving on further because i think if i just tell you an answer right away that will not be an actual answer so we'll have to look at all these cases look at data and then take course corrections and keep improving well, I, guess, I guess it's a val very valid point because uh, you need to give certain amount of time because uh, certain people uh, might look uh, in a in a fashion where they say that okay i need the roi from day one but uh, and and the similar ROI which I'm getting through my human, right? Uh, but I guess it's a it's a far more uh, 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 engaging process uh, to look further uh, because you need to give that bot a certain period of time to stabilize, understand your uh, uh, customer base, right? Doing that conversation accordingly, which your human agents might be doing right now, and it takes certain amount of time, right? Um, but any any case you want to share. Uh, 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 Currently, with Vindya's journey, um, uh, where you see that there is sufficient uh, or or enough uh, engagement happening uh, uh, from the voice-led uh, communication uh, practice, uh, be it a debt collection, be it any other use case where you are saying uh, seeing that kind of uh, uh, interaction or improvement happening uh, from the bot perspective. See, uh, if I got your question right. Uh... Bot, since we are speaking only about debt collection, has its own limitations to an extent where we spoke, right? But if I can use it as a one-stop shop customer engagement tool for my customer engagement, for my customer experience management, for my customer welcoming, and my lead generation and cross-sell, and if I can make something which can cover the entire life cycle of a customer with an organization, right? there as per my opinion is concerned where you can also you know have a human agent attached to it so any of the complexities and anomalies takes place right without even thinking twice how technology should connect to a human agent right by doing this kind of a hybrid model right this will take us to a 2.0 stage of where we stand today without you know disrupting each other's business right today if i have gathered all the guts to come to a forum, running a call center, saying what it can, Sarthi, I mean, a, a voice AI can do. It's all because of uh, the belief I have in what humans can do and what technology can help us do. That's how I look at it. Yeah, very interesting. Like uh, when when we are there, like when we go with an approach where we know that what we are doing and how this is going to improve the entire uh, journey of your customer, right? From from leads to uh, going to welcoming them and then doing the uh, post sales calls, like maybe operational call for an example, debt collection is one of them, right? Uh, when you do a full stack, you also know the pattern of your customer, right? You know that how, like at what time he picked my call during the lead qualification, if the same bucket is moving to the different zone, right? And, and I'll be able to actually nudge that customer during that particular uh, hours or maybe in that particular language itself right um or, or maybe the same module where we have actually reached out to him be it a phone or be it a whatsapp or be it sms right uh i guess uh it's a very valid point to look around but um and and we already discussed about let like let the let mantra me, uh, add rahul something more yeah. interesting for you right yeah. if i have a customer life cycle with me right yeah. and i've sold through a phone at a particular time to him now and I know what time Himna can be reached out. So when 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 he, when he defaults a debt, right, I will call him at the same time because I know Himna will pick the yeah. call. That's the intelligence and I can bring. Exactly. Right? And, and that's so therefore, where, I speak about the life cycle. Yeah, and that's where this omni-channel communication platform also comes handy with you, right? Because you know you have the data to monitor, see what channels you have used, what time you have used, what language he has spoken at, right? So all, all those uh, data is already with you, which can, which can on which you can work upon, right? Uh, so since like we have already discussed about a mantra to, to, to your fellow uh, contact center people, right? Uh, but still, like, I'll, 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 I would need uh, more advice from you from this perspective. If someone 
today uh, from the contact center space right uh, want to implement these voice led omni channel communication uh, uh, strategy uh, uh, for their debt collection process right uh, what advice uh, would you give to them right uh, and uh, like basically uh, how should they actually monitor or uh, uh, basically uh, judge what kind of uh, uh, tool they want to run the show right so what will be your advice to them one you need to understand technology is a enabler yeah. right and uh, we will have to speak to people who do that right and the best way to do this is testimony actually produce uh, to a call center that you are making a bpo a super bpo right there's a difference that's how i look at it right so you that that that's, that should be a pitch and why why would you become a super bpo just like how i told tony stark okay yeah. when robert downing junior is normal he puts on the suit he becomes a superhero so when i have add tech, tech stack to me right i can give my customers my end customers a complete you know package uh, of services where i become a super bpo that way today i will do human resource calling i will use humans to large extent okay today in karnataka there is elections we will have to shut shop by law right if now what am i doing i am running my shop sitting at home one because of technology two my customers are engaged to ibr conversations and we are capturing those and we are still able to reach out to a customer there's no customer dissatisfaction my customer my customer is happy and his customer is happy and imagine in a case where i have a complete conversational uh, toll free number where customers call or i call i can keep i can start generating warm leads and keep tomorrow when working day happens all of it to convert more business i would look at it this way right i would use all my down times to create more more uh, qualified customers that's how i look at it i i i guess you have given me a very uh, very uh, uh, clear pitch to do to a contact center telling them are you do you want to become a super bpo right so i guess that's a interesting uh, key key uh, take away for me from here also uh, like but but uh, like but also like again like with every pros you need to also look around on the cons right so uh what will be your message to to the industry people uh, in terms of like how they like what they should be doing using voice bot right uh, that that's also a very uh, important uh, thing to look around because sometimes people do certain things which are not advisable to do or or they don't actually uh, deep dive into the uh, uh, problem statement they bring in voice bot or the entire communication strategy platform there and it fails right and then when they burn their hand they'll say no boss we we don't want to do it right because it's not something which i am interested in so what kind of uh, advice you have so that uh, people should not uh, uh, look around from a different perspective in terms of they or, or maybe I'll, I'll 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 rephrase it where they can avoid failure uh uh, uh at, at a certain time i i I'll ask so uh this is a this is going to be a little lengthy explanation yeah, yeah, no but i'll do my best to keep it short because it has yeah. to come in it has to cover but, the but, actual nuance I mean, before right? starting that i'll just ask uh, the participants or people who are around here if you have any question please put down on the chat so that after this we'll just take certain questions which himna can answer it yeah no sorry you can you can proceed yeah so now you being a sales person wanting to sell a tech product yeah right and you have to position yourself so strongly that you're going to say your current system my system is going to be beating your system or enhancing your system that's one clarity you need to have second if you ask the right questions to your customers where they will definitely understand their failing points for example you know for a fact you have done study before you meet a customer you know for a fact that last year's pnl is available on the sec you're going to see what is the write off so you you can, can go back always and say there's a 40 crore write off and what if and what if we could do xyz right and i would ask my customers how do you track your customers life cycle what is the workflow you built in your respective lms and let's be aware of the fact this is not a one time implementation move on it's a machine that is learning basis data and stats how is your credit process is intuitive 
you know how what kind of complexities you have built in exceptional approvals and our uh, deviations right how are you factoring that while you are factoring your loan disbursements for example now that we have segregated normal and exceptional customers give them probability scores basis credit knows and customer vulnerability basis the pattern right now it is easy for us to design an effective customer engagement plan where we can factor reminders nudges actual calls look at response days and keep moving on so therefore if you are able to put these thoughts to an entrepreneur right where where is their actual vulnerable points and you can actually then easily able to crack this code of saying what value you can actually bring in yeah so uh, himna uh, uh, before we move uh, there is one more question there's one question here how can ai help in skip tracing so uh, should i look at the chat or? no so the question is uh, from ashish uh, uh, how can ai help in skip uh, skip tracing See, I guess uh, look at your data. Yeah, go yeah. on, go on. Please, please. No, no, sorry. I guess there's some network issue. Um, Himna, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I understand. I, I looked at the chat. How can AI help in script tracing, right? I... Okay, let me say that very clearly. However, right? what leads to the process of a script script tracing where see if when an ai ai is not just about voice at this point in this in this conversation there is also something called as a data dashboard that is being built a pattern that is being looked at right while you build all of this with loads of direct customer information and their response pattern and problem statements i think all of the power lives in the data that we look at you know the da dashboards that we build a good intuitive objectively designed dashboard is available i think 80% of your battle is won right therefore with that categorization of problem statement we can create different cohorts and design communication and solutions accordingly and we can see patterns track repetitive defaulting customers what execute you know what executed action strategies have backfired or what credit calls we have taken is actually backfired what led to a script tracing what attributed to all these defaulting loan books can be looked at and we can arrive at a futuristic solution but from a skip tracing point of view it's a long journey if you have to build that kind of technology today because your your particular organization's lms credit scoring uh, has to be ai driven or logic should be fed into your uh, ai bot and as well as uh, the dashboarding therefore you can predict and forecast that this customer will default which will lead to tracing of skip right because otherwise skip tracing is a little bit tricky also right it, it can also invade customers privacy while because you can do if you start appearing wherever he goes right and you start using technology to uh, you know that that will become harassment then we will beat the purpose of enablement so this ai can build data sets and cohorts to predict and take a futuristic action and not actually at this given point exactly solve this agenda so uh, very interesting here uh, uh, himna uh, so any other question please uh, feel free to add here uh, so himna when when you say uh, uh, data insights right when you do lot of calling you come up with lots of insights um, and uh, when you see the platform where uh, or or any dashboard right even if your agents are having those calls right you you have to dispose that data um how are you actually right now uh, uh managing those data uh, reading those data and uh, uh, understanding your customer uh, behavior uh, is it uh, through any any particular medium or you are doing in a human form or you are using this particular communication platform uh, uh, to look around and and see how it's happening on on the go it's a trade secret but i'm willing to let you know <laughs> right <laughs> yeah uh, so i think uh, we uh, what i have done after uh, coming into the organization and working with the uh, my founders is we have built uh, if, if you actually go see the movies right you will see a command center where a lot of 
TVs, by 10 TVs will be there and there'll be cops sitting and doing all of that. Right? You can visualize of that when I'm talking about this, okay? So I have built a command center where all my customer specific KPIs, which can result into the success metrics are, uh, what to say, built into an AI system, typically a machine learning system. And these, that this command center is monitored by dedicated business intelligence analysts and data reading people, basically your uh, data scientists, a uh, little lower than the data scientists. Cal cal people who look at this and start catching, you know, the anomalies then and there. So you, I don't wait for an end of the day to do a post-mortem. I do a real-time course correction while I look at it. So that, that's why I'm promoting AI to such an extent where you look at data, the amount, then see, today a customer gets X output, right? With my command center, I'm able to give him X1 output because in today's business, a call center ends the day, sends an EOD report, and then the next day the call happens to take what course correction needs to be done. But my command center, right? What we've achieved is we are taking real time course correction. My one hour's productivity or my one hour's anomaly of what I'm supposed to be doing is taken away off track. It, the next hour I pull it back on track. So I don't, yeah. so I, I only lag behind by one hour, but not by one day anymore, right? That's what AI plays a vital role. And with solutions like, solutions partner like, uh, you, you guys coming into picture, this is going to make my command center even more robust, right? This is something which is very strongly believed and built because best part is, I don't know, uh, I come from both a product building and a digital marketing as well as a old school call center model. I've seen all of this. So I'm able to tie up and marry all of this together for a powerful combination. Yeah, I guess, uh, okay, so we are, uh, we are already... Uh... Uh, cross the time but i guess uh it's a re really interesting concept i feel in right because uh, uh as as we also uh, discussed earlier this uh for uh, this session in the session that uh, it's always going to be a hybrid approach right where you have your humans you have your uh ai bots right you have your omnichannel communication strategy in place right all three club together can create <clears throat> that super bpo which we are talking about right uh it's it's not going to be always um, uh, old school it needs to be in hybrid stage right uh, and and i guess both the setup is here uh, going to be uh, is here going to stay right for a, for a longer period of time and it has to work uh, with both hands together uh, i guess and and I, when i go and I, I i speak to contact center people i always say that uh, this is your third arm right you already have two arm we are giving you a third arm uh, uh, to to work with right so i guess uh, on that note itself, uh, Himnag, uh, thank you for your time, right? It was really insightful uh, for us, for all the people here who have joined uh, uh, with us. Uh, but uh, what I, uh, I'm, I'm really interested uh, 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 to let people know about your uh, uh, fitness routine, uh, being, being into this uh, industry, which is uh, very hectic, uh, for uh, uh, in in the entire journey, right? Uh, uh, but you still manages your time. Uh, go out for your fitness routine. We have seen lots of photos, videos of you uh, uh, doing those activities. Uh, but yes, uh, thank you for the time. I guess uh, yeah. So case study we wanted to discuss. Uh, I guess, uh, uh, but it's already five five. Uh, but uh, I guess also that we have discussed a lot. Uh, probably we'll have one more session with Hemnag where we can discuss a case uh, with them uh, specifically on uh, one of Vindya's customer where they have implemented it. I guess we will have one more session onto it uh, moving forward. Uh, probably a kind of podcast which we can do to discuss it. Um, and since uh, yeah, so I guess uh, Hemnag, thank you, thank you for your time. Uh, you want to add something? You can please. Uh, then probably we can have a closer note. All good. I'm here to help, right? I want to make <laughs> super BPOs, right? I want to. I want to be the industry dis leading disruptor. <laughs> I, I yes. I I guess it's it's very important. I guess uh, we we all need to work together. Uh, thank you, Subhita. Thank you for organizing this. So uh, so I, I have one thing, Rahul. Every yeah, time you crack a sale using super BPO, you need to send me royalty. Okay. Yeah, definitely done. <laughs> <laughs> but but I I, I definitely uh, I come I I need to have those.
powerful fitness mantra coming from you uh, irrespective of work whatever is happening around the world that that is something which i i really admire about you right so uh, i have seen the transformation uh, uh, which you have like done uh, but yes uh, definitely would love to be there if if this uh, and and super bbo is stuff, definitely i am taking uh, 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 one like well, a couple of words for for my sales pitch i guess that is that sums up my entire pitch when i go and and uh, do it right thank you thank you for your time thank you so vidya for organizing this over to can, you can we can we have hemnag's uh, contact number please yeah yeah sure we can <laughs> yeah cool. i mean you can drop it in the chat yeah, i am willing yeah. to take a call yeah. should i or suvida you will be able to do it with yeah, suvida will share yeah that's not a problem sure doing that okay. right is there all i guess uh, suvidha are you there yes so yeah so over to you you can uh, i have dropped my contact number in the uh, the chat for the gentleman who had asked so we can connect yes yeah. suvidha yeah, what do you 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 can have your closing session thanks everyone that's it for today if anyone is remain to ask anything we still have hemnag with us not just around industry related but any health questions are also welcome yeah sure have dropped my number make a note of it and just I guess that's it. We should connect. Uh, thank you for your insights, Emma. Uh, thank you, Sujaya, for organizing this. Uh, uh, from the entire Sarthi uh, team of uh, family, uh, we are glad. Uh, we are honored that you are here. Uh, thank you for your time. Um, thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining. All the best. Yeah. Thanks. Do thank you so much, well, Emma, for coming thank over. So yeah. Thank you for your diligent follow-up. Okay. <laughs> thanks, everyone.